In this video, we are going to see how to add images inside Excel cells. We are not talking about insert picture. This is insert picture, which we have been able to do for ages. What is the difference? This is a separate picture. It's floating on top of the Excel sheet. If I go to Home tab selection pane, it actually shows me this as a separate object. It has nothing to do with the Excel sheet. It is not a result of a formula. Whereas these pictures are actually a result of a formula. And that's what we'll see this time. In order to use the image function, we need a source. Now, whenever you are learning a function for the first time, don't just go through this because it's confusing. Maybe you have already typed the name of the image function. Press Control A. That will open the dialog. Another way of doing it is click on FX. And now here, I can search for the function. In either case, I get the dialog. The benefit of this is I can see all the parameters. The one in bold is mandatory, which are not bold are optional. In addition, it also gives me help about what each parameter does. Now, what is it saying about source? Give me the path of the file. Now, that's correct, but this is a little misleading. This path has to be an HTTPS path. It cannot be C colon backslash temp. No, not local drive. It has to be an image which is already saved on a web page and you should have access to that web page. So, I already have those URLs here. Now, before we go and look at it, let me just copy this URL as it is and see it in a browser. And this is the image actual size. Now, we come back to Excel and in the second column, I'm going to add the image function. Now, remember, this is a table. So, when I add a function, it's going to copy it for all the rows. So, the first parameter is source. I'm just going to click in this cell. You know the syntax. At the rate means current row and then the column name. Now, because the column name has a space, there is a square bracket for that. Now, other things are optional. We will see them later. And now, it actually went to the website, found the picture and rendered the picture in the Excel sheet. That is the image function job. All this happened because I had an internet connection. Let's do the same thing after disconnecting from internet. I'm going to delete this, disconnect from internet. Now it gives me something like this, which basically means the width is less. When you increase the width, you will see this error. This is an important error. You may not have seen it before. The error comes when the file cannot be accessed or network connectivity issue. Now let's look at the rest of the parameters. All text is a very important parameter and that basically is helpful for people who have eyesight problems. If you can't see the image, we have to describe the image and that's a responsibility for everyone who has eyesight. Now in this case, I don't want to hard code it. The name of the product is here and these are logos. So I'm going to actually put the name of the product, access and then ampersand, the word logo. Now, by doing this, you will not see anything else, but people with eyesight problems use assistive technologies like a screen reader or narrator. So, if I, so when you enable the narrator, you will notice that it's using our alt text to describe what is there in the image. Narrator dialog, F4, selected, editable, access logo. It's also important to remember to add alt text for charts. Third parameter is the way in which the image will adjust itself to the size of the cell. We already saw that the original image is quite big and sort of square. Now, what it is telling me is if the size of the cell changes, how to adjust the image within the cell. So right now it is zero, which is the default. So let's see if I make the width bigger, it's increased slightly. If I increase the height, then it increased proportionately. So that is called fit. So as long as the image fits properly, without distorting the image, try to do it. That's the default. Now let's try to change it to comma one and see what happens. So it is going to actually fill the cell. Now it's forcibly trying to stretch the image to fill the cell. It may look like the cell is filled, but the image is getting distorted. So generally you don't want to use this. Let's try the other one. Comma two means original size. Now this means the actual size which we saw on the web page earlier. Now it was going to ignore how big or small that particular Excel cell is and actually show itself. So now what happened? Most of them are getting cut off because our Excel cell is much smaller 
than the actual size of the image. So again, not very useful. Third one is custom size, where you actually specify what is the size. Now, if I just say three and press enter, it'll give you an error because we said custom size, but then we did not specify the height and width and see what happens. It'll try to get stretched and it's weird. Now, what is happening? It is actually showing the image in 700 width, but the column doesn't have 700 width. So now if I increase the column width, you will see what exactly is happening. Unless you have a very strong reason to do it, don't use custom sizes. So now we know how to use the image function and the video is finished. No, not at all. Most videos will finish by now because you seem to know the feature, but that's not enough. How are you going to use it in practical day-to-day -day scenarios? That's more important. When will you use it? Whenever you have a catalog of pictures, those could be products, those could be logos, spare parts, scene of crime photographs, anything which makes sense from a business point of view. Most probably you already have those pictures. Now the question is how to put the pictures with an HTTPS link so that we can start using them in Excel. Now to do that, you'll have to upload the pictures to some website. As a business user, I don't think IT is going to allow you to create websites. So the place to go to is LIS. Assuming you have Office 365, go to office.com, log in using your corporate email ID. Now you'll see the logo and nine dots next to it. Now you will see LIS. You create LIS which contain columns. You start with a blank list. By default, you will have title column. But what we are interested in is pictures. So add a column of type image. Click next give it a name and click save. Now your list is ready. You can add one at a time by clicking on new. So you put the title, put the image, or if you want like Excel grid data entry, edit in grid view, put the title, put the image. To save time, I have already done this. We need this data in Excel so that we can use these images as an Excel cell formula. There is an export to Excel option. Let's try that. This generates an IQY or internet query file. Yes, click on it. Excel knows how to open it. It is an external downloaded thing, so it will give you a warning. Yes, we want it as Excel table and it will bring all the data. That's good enough. Problem is, what is the data? This is the data about each photograph. Now, what we are interested in is the HTTPS link. If you open this and see, it does have a partial URL and the actual URL is here. So, this URL, server URL, plus the relative URL is what exactly we want. Now, I could have done this by adding a column and putting some formulas in Excel, but I'll tell you a better way. You go and use Power Query. While importing the data itself, I will create the correct URL and then we can use it using the image function. You go to data, get data from SharePoint. Now, we'll need a link for SharePoint. So, go to the list and copy the link. Now, mind you, paste the whole link, but we don't really need the entire link here. We need only the HTTPS, domain name, SharePoint.com part, then personal, and then your email ID with underscores. Anything after that, you delete. And now implementation two is better. Yes, click on the advanced option and say, don't retrieve all columns. I don't need them. Just the default view. Click OK. Now, is going to show me all the lists which I have created in life. No problem. This is the list we want. It does not show me the link because it's a record, multiple columns there. I do need to repair it. So I'm going to say transform data. It will open Power Query. Power Query shows me the same columns, but I'm interested in this record. I'm not interested in this ID, so I'll remove it. This record has itself multiple columns, so I want to expand it. Now, if I expand it fully, is going to give me file name, server ID, all of them. Let's anyway look at it. I don't want this name. I want this relative path and I want the HTTP. I don't want the rest of it. I don't want this expanded photo thing. I'll undo it, go back, expand again. And this time I will only choose relative URL and server URL. Great. Now I'll combine the two but I want this second and this first. Okay, so drag this column, put it before. Now we will select this column and shift click this column. Go to transform and say merge columns. 
Now the merge column need to be given a name. Let's call it photo. That's exactly what we wanted. So we will say close and load to. This time I'll just create a table. And now I got the data exactly the way I wanted. Now the only thing we need to do is create the image function. So I'm going to say image. And now it will say busy, busy, busy. Actually go and retrieve each one of them. And obviously when this is happening, you need an internet connection. Now let me show this to you without internet connection. Hash connect error. So generally whenever there is a formula and there is a file which cannot be accessed for various reasons or there is a network connectivity issue is going to come. And for images, required images are unavailable for whatever reason or you can't retrieve it which is what exactly happened just now. So that's the hash connect error. But anyway, now we are connected. So let me just add the function again. Now it is doing the job. So if I increase the size of a cell, of course it is going to automatically adjust the picture to fit it as much as possible. Now what happens when the data changes on the list? Now this I'm going to say edit in grid view and add one more item. Now remember, this record is still being edited. I have to press tab, go to the next row, then it will get saved. Now back to Excel. What do we want? Nothing. We just say right click and refresh and it should pick up the image and retrieve the image and show it as it is. This is a more vertical image. Only if I make it taller is going to show me the image. One side effect you must remember. So I'm going to save this file and look at the file size. This is an 11 MB file. Why is that? Because each image is occupying space. The images may be visible in a very small space, but the original file is actually stored inside Excel. So just to prove this, I'm going to delete this column, save the file, close the file and look at the file size again. And you'll notice it has reduced to 23 KB. Unlike images which we add from insert picture, you cannot compress these images. So if you want to optimize the file size, you will have to do the compression before you upload the images. I'm sure you found all this useful and you're going to like, share, subscribe, click the bell icon, click the thanks button. But more importantly, change the way you use Excel. Stop using Excel for tabular data entry and start using lists. I've created a detailed video for it. Have a look at it. It will change your life for better. So that's it for now. Thank you.